So good afternoon, everybody. My name is Cesar Christofaridis. I run a company called Social Bakers. And today I have the great privilege of presenting to you a great speaker from Philip Morris. Oh, last people coming in. Her name is Gabriela Wurzel, and she is going to be talking about transformation and how a company the size of Philip Morris is also undergoing such a challenge. So warm welcome for Gabriela. Hi. As you heard, I'm Gabriela. I'm Vice President External Affairs with Philip Morris International, and I'm responsible for the Latin American Canada region. And I'm here today to share with you the amazing transformation that our company is going through and how this amazing transformation is actually changing the world. So I hope you'll enjoy. But before we start, let me ask you a question. Who knows Philip Morris International? Who's familiar with Philip Morris? Many. Maybe you think you know us. Because for many years, we've actually been top marketeers. We own some of the most valuable brands in consumer goods. We have become famous for one of the iconic symbols that is the Marlboro Man, that is at the same level, maybe only, only with uh, Tony the Tiger. So yes, we are a very successful cigarette company. We own very important brands. But we are much more than that. We are building our future on smoke-free products that even though they are not harmless, they are a much better choice than continue smoking. So we have, we have this commitment. We really want to achieve a smoke-free future. And this means that we want to stop selling cigarettes as soon as possible, as you hear. Coming from us, it may sound crazy, but it's actually not. We want to end cigarette consumption as soon as possible. Why? Because this is the right thing to do. And because now we can. It's the right thing to do because we all know that cigarette smoking is bad for health. Cigarettes are bad. So we care about the people who actually smoke, and these people deserve better choices. So this is the right thing to do for the smokers, also for their families and friends, those of us who don't smoke. We care about those who smoke, right? And it's also the right thing to do for our company, for our shareholders, and also for our employees, because we feel we are, for the first time, doing something meaningful. And as I'm sure you heard in many of the other sessions during these two days, consumers are actually wanting people, the companies, to do something meaningful. So we have decided to take this bold step and to change a very successful business model for another one that is based on, a new, on new products that we literally just invented ourselves. This is the story that I want to share with you. And you may wonder, so why is she talking to me now? <laughs> why, why is she here? Why, why is Philip Morris talking to us? Well, you are the creative community. You are trendsetters, right? You create ideas. You can make dreams come true. Or you can kill dreams. So we have a dream. Our dream was to be able to create products that were acceptable to smokers, because if they're not acceptable, nobody switches to them, people continue smoking. But at the same time, better for them. Better from a health perspective. And we actually achieved that. After many years of scientific research with top scientists from around the world that worked in our two R&D centers in Switzerland and in Singapore, after an investment of more than four and a half billion dollars, and after a, lo a lot of trial and error, we managed to put in the market products that are better. Now, I say better, I, I don't say good, <laughs> because they are not harmless, right? Let's be very clear from the outset. I don't want to mislead anybody. The best thing for everybody is not to smoke or to quit. 
not to use nicotine or tobacco. But for those who actually smoke and will continue if they don't have alternatives, these people deserve better choices. It is to these people that we are addressing this. So I said we, we, we had a dream. This is a reality, but it, this is just the beginning. And so we need you, we need your help in making this smoke-free future a reality. We need you, your ideas, your passion, as much as we need governments, as much as we need the civil society, the health community. So this is why we are here today. You are from the creative community, so, so some of you may be familiar with the TV show Mad Men. So who remembers on the fourth season, Don Draper, the chief advertiser, he wrote an op-ed in the New York Times stating, we are quitting tobacco. Actually, you may remember that this bold statement actually was the consequence of their cigarette company client actually leaving the agency. <laughs> so the motivation was not very altruistic, but it was still a very bold statement, right? And, and I like it because we at Philip Morris are not quitting tobacco. We are quitting cigarettes as soon as possible because cigarettes are, by any means, the most harmful way of consuming tobacco. So why are these products that we have better? Because we are tackling the problem that scientists have known already for many, many years, that the most problematic thing or the problem from smoking comes from burning tobacco, the combustion process. When you burn something, in this case tobacco, it creates a smoke. The smoke has harmful and toxic components that are linked to the smoking-related diseases. So this is something known by scientists for many years, and we've been trying to tackle that problem. How can we hit tobacco without burning it? And how can we do this in a way that is actually still pressurable for people because there is no harm reduction equation if you don't have a less harmful product, but also a product that is accepted by the consumer so they can switch. So we tried, we tried, we failed many times. We thought we had a product that actually heated tobacco without burning. It turns out we didn't. Then we thought we had a product that actually was acceptable for consumers. It turned out nobody liked it. But we kept trying, right? We kept trying. And back in 2008, we accelerated our R&D towards a smoke-free product that was actually good. And we spent, as I mentioned, four and a half billion dollars. We hired more than 400 scientists and engineers and technicians from all over the world. We committed as a company and we finally managed. We managed to put in the market products that are much better than continuous smoking. And again, let me repeat myself, this is not innocuous. This is still, you know, it still has uh, nicotine that is a, an addictive component that comes naturally in tobacco. So it's not for minors, it's not for people with some health problems, but it does eliminate the main source of smoking related diseases, the smoke. So instead of the, the smoke, there is a vapor, an aerosol, that contains an average of 90 to 95% less harmful components compared to cigarette smoke. And it's not me who says that, it's the science. And speaking of science, I mentioned we have top class scientists. They have published in more than 200 peer review publications. They participate in the top conferences. And we are so confident about the science that it's public, it's out there, and it's up for scrutiny because this is the only credibility that we can bring to the table at this point in time, it's the science. So as a matter of fact, our science is being scrutinized. In the past year and a half, many public health authorities from governments around the world and private sector have 
looked at the existing studies or conducted their own, and they all coincide that this goes indeed in the direction of harm reduction. So we are convinced that we can actually achieve this smoke-free future. What we want, the, this is just the beginning. What we want is for everybody to quit smoking or if they don't want to, to move to these products. And the problem we are tackling here is very clear, is that people still smoke. The World Health Organization estimates that around one billion people smoke today. And they also predict that this figure will continue the same in the foreseeable future. So roughly 1.1 billion people will smoke in the next decade or so. Why is that? Because some people quit smoking, but population grows. So we are talking about one out of seven people in this planet will smoke in the next decade. These people is us, ourselves. Perhaps some of you smoke, but for sure some of your family members smoke or some of your friends smoke. Certainly some of mine do. My mom, who's in Argentina, smokes. And Argentina is a country where Unfortunately, yet, we are not able to commercialize smoke-free products. So we want these people, we want smokers to have access to alternatives and to have information. As simple as that, to be able to make informed choices. And that's why I was saying that this is the right thing to do for the people we care about. So this is a problem we're trying to tackle. We don't want to convince anybody who does not smoke to start with these products, and we don't want to prevent anybody from quitting smoking. This is very clear, this is the best thing they can do. But the WHO, the World Health Organization itself says, this is not gonna happen, you know, people will continue. So this is, this is what we are targeting here, and this is our objective. And now it's, it's a reality. We can see that it's possible to achieve this smoke-free future. Because after more than 10 years of research and development, after all this investment, after our commitment, public commitment by our CEO saying we want to stop selling cigarettes as soon as possible, we actually have products in the market. So from Moscow to Milan to Tokyo, and closer to us, from Bogota to Guatemala City to Santo Domingo, six million people have quit smoking and switched to our smoke-free products. We have these products in 40 countries around the world, more than 40 actually. And this is just the beginning because people keep switching. So 10,000 people every single day quit smoking and move to smoke-free products. And hopefully this will be just the beginning, but, but we know that we cannot do this alone. That's why we need you, you need your help, we need your ideas to make this a reality. And I'm convinced that together we can actually change the future, that together we can change the negative predictions of the World Health Organization. <coughs> So what we want is to get the 180 million people who currently smoke our cigarettes to either quit or move to less harmful alternatives. And what we want even further is to get the rest of the one plus billion people that will continue smoking in the future to either quit or switch to these products. And it's a serious commitment. It's so serious that we, are, we realized that we, you know, having, just having the product out there is not enough. We also needed to transform ourselves as a company. 
And so for the past two, three years, we have been go undergoing an amazing internal transformation to actually be ready for what's coming. So we are learning from the startup, you know, the startups. We are moving, we're not working as this huge multinational company anymore. We're trying to learn from the startup mentality. We are looking into how we can actually reach consumers in a different way because now for the first time we need to explain to them what this is. It's not a natural mechanism like smoking a cigarette. We need to, we call, convert them. This is the term that we use internally. And we are hiring people from very diverse backgrounds, from the tech industry, from startups, from the pharma sector, from the civil society. So now we have a huge number of people working in our company that before would have never worked with us. <laughs> and this shows the amazing transformation we are going through. Just to give an example, we have a venture fund that actually works with companies, with startups that have products that are not related with uh, tobacco at all. But they have one thing in common, that they use technology to make a better world. So from waste management to food, et cetera. We work with these companies, not just giving them money, but working as a business partner to ensure that their business is a success. And we feel that this reflects who we are now because this is a story of how innovation, technology, and science can actually change the world. So this is what I wanted to share with you, but I repeat myself, we will never make it alone. We need you. And I imagine that you are thinking at this point, this is fantastic, how wonderful. But if they are really serious, why don't they just stop selling cigarettes, right? Well, I'm sure that's a great question, but unfortunately, as long as there is demand for cigarettes, if we just stop selling cigarettes, people will buy somebody else's. So this is not the solution today. The solution is to tackle the demand, to make sure that people actually find an alternative, either quit and those who won't, thank you. Yes, that's the kind of interaction that I'm looking for. <laughs> no, no, please, please, on the contrary. This is what we are aiming, precisely that, that they, are, they have the information, they have access to this product so that they can make an informed decision. And we are convinced that this path is the one that will lead us to one day announce, hopefully here, to the world that we are stop, stopping selling cigarettes. This is our commitment. We are firm, we are public. And that's why here, what I want to share with you is a proposal we are willing to give to any person in your agencies or companies who smoke today and would continue smoking, smoke-free products, as long as the law allows that, because in some countries, unfortunately, yet this is not possible, but as long as the law allows us, we want to give to your colleagues, to your friends, smoke-free products so that they can switch to a better alternative. And I know that this is important to you because I'm sure you care about your colleagues, you care about your friends as much as I do. If I could give this product to my mom in Argentina, I can assure you I would without thinking about it. So we want, yes, please. have been smoking 40 years of their life to you know, handle an electric smoke-free device that they've never even, you don't even have to hold a lighter to, you know what I mean? Like there's just a routine that goes into cigarette smoking that people enjoy, like stepping outside, like they just enjoy that, stepping outside, lighting up the cigarette, you know, inhaling that. And although they know they're getting sick by doing it, how do you feel that your company is gonna target those people, because those are the ones that, that's technically harming them the most at this point. They've been smoking for so long. 
Yeah, no, that, that's a great question. That's absolutely a great question, and this is one of the challenges we face because we need to relate to consumers. That way, that's why I was talking about converting people. We need to explain, we need to accompany them. So the old model of just putting the product in a kiosk and waiting for people to come and buy them, it's over. What we have now is people who actually accompany the, 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 the smoker in their journey. And in a week, roughly in a week of accompanying them, and obviously we're talking about a, an electronic device, basically, because we're talking about an electronic device and a consumable stick that has tobacco in it. That's the product that is out there. So it's not as intuitive as, as smoking a cigarette. So it requires you know, a, a different relationship with the consumer. Uh, but actually, it, it's working, you know, it's working. Obviously, you know, people who are more into tech are the ones who are taking this more. But in most countries, we're saying that people who try and, and test it for a week or so, they never go back to cigarettes. And we have a 70 to 90% uh, rate of conversion with this product. But it's indeed a, it's indeed a challenge. Thank you for that question. So, yes. Tobacco has been so vilified, right? But I was at Advertising Week a couple of weeks back, and they had an entire floor dedicated to marijuana, right? I mean, this may, may or may not be r related, but gosh, I mean, they, they're, just, uh, they're just advertising it as like a, I don't wanna say like a healthy al alternative, but it's kind of like the cool thing, you know, with all these, and I don't know if you see any correlation between like the people that are still smoking and going to marijuana or anything like, like anything, there's, there's, there's a correlation there, because the more, I'm, for, for example, I see you guys, like, like tobacco's just be basically been hidden in, in many ways, but all of a sudden, like, people are starting to uh, talk about this dispensaries. People are going to states just to, to Colorado and to California where, where uh, smoking marijuana is legal and trying and jumping in on, on, that, uh, on that trend, right? Absolutely, and you touch upon very interesting and different topics. Uh, first of all, I don't see a correlation except maybe that when you smoke marijuana the traditional way, it burns. <laughs> so the smoke is bad for you, clearly. Um, but apart from that, you know, we have been asked, my CEO has been asked in several opportunities, are you guys moving to the marijuana business? And his answer was, look, we have already enough problems in our business. <laughs> we don't want to get into another controversial area. So th this is a reality. But, but you touch also upon something else, which is you know, the, the image of the tobacco industry. And this is one of the challenges that we, or I would say the key challenge, because we have a history. There is, there is you know, lack of trust in us. So whatever we say is you know, always questioned in advance. And that is why the only thing that we can do is to say, well, don't trust us, to trust the science. That's why we make everything absolutely transparent. We put it out there for scrutiny. Because then, you know, the public health community is, is looking into that and they realize, well, yes, these guys may have done bad things in the past, but now they do have a solution to complement the existing policies. So that's what I'm going to tell you. Tobacco is like the bad guy, and now the marijuana is like the cool guy, right? And it's just very, it's like such a hopeless question right now. Absolutely. And in some countries, there are also double standards, you know, where, where some harmful things are allowed, others are not. And for me, to be honest, the, the most dangerous double standard is in countries where you can smoke cigarettes, but you cannot access smoke-free products because you are allowing the most harmful thing and you're not allowing the, the, the less harmful one. And this is a reality, especially in Latin America, very unfortunately, where we have barriers to sell smoke-free products in many countries, such as e-cigarettes, electronic cigarettes, that is a different um, thing, but part of the same, they have in common that they are smoke-free. And there are uh, lots of studies in, in the UK, around the world, that clearly show that they are much, much less harmful. And still in, in Latin America, in many places, uh, smokers don't have access to them. So this double standard, it's, it's problematic. But, but I'm hopeful, to be very honest. I'm hopeful that this is changing. In more than, I think it's 43 countries around the world, we are selling these products. Uh, in many countries, like in the UK, they not only use our products, but they use electronic cigarettes a lot, which is great because it's better than cigarettes. 
So there is, there is really a, a societal demand for these products. And I think that, you know, regulation usually follows technology. So first you have the technology, then you have the regulation that, go, that, that takes it into account. And this is, this is what we are seeing. And, I, and I'm hopeful. I'm very hopeful. And I'm, I'm here. Yeah, please, please. Sorry, uh, from a marketing standpoint, I'm sure you're familiar with Juul in the United States and Canada that they started engaging with influencer marketing on, especially on Instagram. It was very millennial oriented. And then they got in trouble with the FDA and the drug administration that they had to stop engaging in sexy advertising because they were advertising to people that hadn't smoked. So they were jumping from not smoking to using a smoking cessation product. So what is Philip Morris doing to balance their communication to make sure they're engaging people that are only looking to stop smoking? Absolutely, and this is, this is a concern, a very va valid concern, and it's definitely a concern for us because as I said, these are not products for, for minors, and these are not products for people who don't smoke or even those who want to quit. So what we do is to pay a lot of attention to our marketing practices. We have a marketing code very clear. If you go to what we call the ICO store, where you can buy these products around the world, the first thing they ask is, are you a smoker? And if you say no, I will not even give you the information. So it's very strict, uh, not, to, not to mention if you're a minor, right? <laughs> you shouldn't be there. But we also conduct um, pre-market and post-market uh, studies to see how appealing these products are for minors, for example, or for, for non-smokers, actually, rather for non-smokers. And the results are very encouraging, that they are very, very, lead, there is little appealing to non-smokers. So we take this very, very seriously. How are you marketing them? Uh, in what sense? Uh, are we bringing up what advertising media are you using? Are you using social? How are you getting the word out? We, uh, we, we follow the law. <laughs> so the law varies from country to country. Uh, where we can, we use you know, the existing tools. Uh, but as I was mentioning, we also have to, to change completely the way we, we market the products in the sense that before it was, you know, you just put it in a kiosk and that was it. Now we have what we call ICOS coaches. So it's people who actually follow up with the consumer and can answer all the questions uh, during, you know, whatever time it takes, at least a week or two. They, and then there are you know, um, hotlines where people can ask questions, why is my device not working well or whatever, how do I clean it? So there is much more of a personalized uh, follow-up. But in terms of advertising, et cetera, we, we follow the law because in most countries, actually, um, they fall within the, the regular tobacco law. And this is also another, another point because it, you know, governments and health authorities are really serious about people switching to less harmful alternatives Hopefully, they will create a different regulatory environment that exists today. But unfortunately, in Latin America, this is not yet the case. I don't know. I, I honestly, I don't have the statistics. For a brand loyal, so for example, the one for me, no smoker, um, the Marlboro that goes after, I don't know if you still do it, the points that you do and the gift, of, uh, the gift or the travel that you were given as an incentive. Is that type of market more open to this other alternative? Or? What we're seeing is that People actually, when they when they switch, when they try, they they don't go back. Most of them. This is you can see in our company. You barely see anybody in Philip Morris smoking cigarettes. They are all you know all the like I don't smoke, for example. But those who smoke, uh, who used to smoke, switch. So it's 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 going very well. Um, there is at least a 70 percent convert total conversion rate, and many people actually you know are perhaps some some use both. But the idea is that they they switch completely. Um, and in terms of, let's say, the incentives, et cetera, we are, the, last year, the 40% uh, of our commercialization expenses went to smoke-free products, 40. And obviously, this is increasing the more we have this in the market. And 70% of our R&D expenditure 
went to smoke-free products and the rest is not because we are developing new cigarettes, it's because we have to comply with some legal requirements in some countries. But uh, we, we're taking this very, very seriously. And, and the pricing, It's uh, roughly, well, you have to buy the, the electronic component, which is, it depends in some countries, it's one-time investment, but the, the, the consumable is roughly at the price of uh, Marlboro, for example. If, yeah, yeah if, I, if I may, just so, so just to yeah. wrap up, I, I am very <laughs> happy that you know you, you, we've engaged in this conversation. Yeah. We have a room uh, outside called um, Sub Saba Six, where you know if you want we can talk more because we really would like your ideas, um, your questions. You know, we're we're really in this together. We we feel that together we we can change the world, and uh, and we have this challenge for you that I mentioned, you know, if your uh, smokers in your companies would like to have access to this, we're really happy to do that. So I hope you will, you will take the challenge and, and, and join the conversation. And by the way, we have social media, we have the at Inside PMI, and also for Spanish speakers in Latin America, we have Futuro Sin Humo. Uh, so please, please join us there too. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you very much, Gabriela.